Hello and welcome to Insight of Thelmology. This is Dr. Amrit, welcoming you to another lecture in the uveitis course. Today we are studying the posterior uveitis and we shall be focusing on the retinitis. We know that the sun working group classification of uveitis is based on the primary site of inflammation and therefore when the primary site of inflammation is in the anterior chamber, what we have is the anterior uveitis and when the primary site of inflammation is in the vitreous, it is called intermediate uveitis. And when the primary site of inflammation is present in the retina or in the choroid, that is referred to as the posterior uveitis. In panuveitis, the primary site of inflammation will involve the anterior chamber, the vitreous and also the retina and choroid. So that is called panuveitis. So first we have the retinitis. Retinitis is when the inflammation is limited to the retina, that is called retinitis. When the inflammation is limited to the choroid, it is called choroiditis. When the inflammation is present in the vessels, it is called vasculitis. And when the inflammation is present and inflammation involves the optic nerve as well, along with the retina, it is called neuroretinitis. Now, these terms are not, uh, uh, not exactly exclusive. The inflammation of retina can sometimes involve the inflammation of the choroid as well or, the, uh, or vice versa. That means inflammation in the choroid can eventually spread uh, anteriorly and involve the retina. And therefore, we get two terms which are retinochoroiditis or chorioretinitis. Here, the term retinochoroiditis means that the inflammation starts in the retina and then spreads downward or deeper to involve the choroid and this is called retinochoroiditis. What is meant by chorioretinitis? Chorioretinitis is when the inflammation starts in the choroid, from the choroid it spreads uh, above to the retina, then that is called chorioretinitis, okay? So example of retinochoroiditis is your toxoplasma. So toxoplasma always comes from the retina and then it involves the choroid. And the example of chorioretinitis is tuberculosis. TB always comes from the choroid and then it goes to involve the retina. Now the question is, how does a retinitis lesion look like? Okay, so this depends on the, the degree of inflammation, whether the inflammation is limited to the inner layers of the retina or the inflammation is present in the outer layers of the retina or the inflammation is involving the entire full thickness of the retina. Now, if the inflammation is full thickness or if the inflammation is involving just the inner layers of the retina, the retinitis lesions, what we get, will be bright yellow in color they will be in they will be having indistinct borders and they will be slightly fluffy in their appearance very similar to that of a cotton wool spot okay now we know that the retinal vasculature is present in the nerve fiber layer which is also present on the it is as if it's sitting on top of the retina right so if you have a lesion involving the full thickness of the retina or the inner retinal uh, lesion inner retinal retinitis there you are getting a bright yellow fluffy lesion. So obviously the retinal vasculature which is passing through, the, through these lesions will also be affected and will not be seen very clearly. Okay. Now the third point is that they look like cotton wool spots and because these lesions are present in close proximity to the vitreous, some of the inflammatory cells are also going to go towards the vitreous and there will be inflammation in the vitreous which is called vitritis. Okay. Now, now, what if the uh, retinal inflammation is limited to the outer layers of the retina? Then the color of the lesion will now become slightly dull orange to dull yellow, uh, yellow in color. The borders will still be indistinct, but the vasculature now will remain clear over the lesions. Okay. And now since the inflammation is present in the outer layers of the retina, they will not be in close contact with the vitreous and therefore the vitritis, if it occurs also, it will be very mild to moderate sort of vitritis in the outer retinal inflammatory lesions. So as you can see in this picture, this is a retinitis lesion. Okay, so this is like a bright yellowish color lesion. You can see the vessel passing uh, through this lesion and slightly in this area, the vessel seems to be slightly blurred out. So this is probably a full thickness retinitis or the retinitis inflammation involving the inner layers of the retina. Now, based on the location, okay, retinitis can further be classified into focal retinitis 
in which you see just a single lesion in the retina that is called solitary lesion or focal retinitis or you can have multiple lesions scattered across the retina so that is called multifocal retinitis or you can have almost the entire retina getting involved with retinitis so that is called geographical or diffuse retinitis again i would like to show you this picture just have a look at this picture you can see this this is the abnormal area present on the retina so this looks quite bright uh, yellowish to whitish in color and you can see the vessels here this vessel is coming like this and you can see this vessel but the vessels here are much less redder in color uh, they're not as red as the normal vessels seen over here and similarly here if you trace this vessel this vessel is actually disappearing in this region so this indicates that we are dealing with a retinitis lesion since the vessels are actually getting obscured by the lesion now as i told you that retinitis can be divided into focal and multifocal retinitis so first let us see what are the causes of focal retinitis toxoplasmosis can cause focal retinitis along with that toxocara cysticercosis onchocerciasis and various masquerade syndromes okay so masquerade syndromes are conditions which can mimic uveitis but are actually not uveitis okay so they are called masquerading symptoms uh, syndromes so the causes of focal retinitis which you should remember is toxoplasmosis toxocara cysticercosis and onchocerciasis along with some masquerade syndromes so let us see a few example of focal retinitis in the first picture in the first picture you can see in the macular area there is a bright yellowish color lesion okay and you can see the other details are not very clear the optic disc is not very clear so when uh, whenever the optic disc and the vessels are not very clear or when they look hazy you should suspect some degree of vitreitis to be present and usually with retinitis you do have some amount of vitreitis as well now this sign is called headlight and fog sign and it is very typical of toxoplasmosis okay so toxoplasmosis has a very typical sign associated with it which is called headlight in fog sign headlight in fog so the fog over here is the vitreitis which is associated with toxoplasmosis and this bright yellow retinitis lesion looks like a headlight in that fog okay so that is called headlight in fog sign the second picture is again of toxoplasmosis but as you can make out here the amount of vitreitis is not as severe as in the first picture because the disc and the vessels are much clearer as compared to the first picture however here you can see this black color lesion which is nothing but it is a scarred tissue so this is basically again a case of toxoplasmosis in which this area where you have this blackish pigmentation represents an old scar of toxoplasma or old scar of or healed retinal retinitis lesion so previously the patient had retinitis here okay and that has healed to form a scar but what about this area at the edge of the scar at the edge of the scar now you see this whitish color lesion which is obscuring the underlying blood vessels so that is definitely your active retinitis lesion right so this is one feature which is very particular of toxoplasma that in toxoplasmosis reactivation occurs at the edge of an old scar what about the third picture in this third picture again you can see this whitish scar uh, tissue or a whitish area lesion which is well defined you can see the blood vessels are not very visible it is present in the periphery so this is actually a picture of toxocara retinitis okay and usually in some of the toxocara retinitis you will also see some amount of vitreous bands extending from that peripheral granuloma which is present towards the disc area now after these fo focal retinitis causes let us talk about some of the causes of multifocal retinitis so your syphilis which is a great masquerader can also present as multifocal retinitis then a lot of viral causes can cause multifocal retinitis so these are hsv uh, vzv that is varicella zoster virus hsv is herpes simplex virus and cmv is cytomegalovirus so these three entities together they cause what is known as viral retinitis okay yeah another condition is diffuse unilateral subacute neuroretinitis which happens because of parasites and basically because of the visceral 
larva migrants so these also cause multifocal retinitis so wherever the larva migrates at those places you will see tracks and at those places you will see retinitis so that is a, a cause of multifocal retinitis apart from that candida of uh, endophthalmitis also sometimes can look like uh, retinitis apart from that sarcoid sarcoid can cause uh, various choroidal lesions as well and it can give rise to multifocal retinitis as well and of course masquerade syndromes can again mimic a multifocal retinitis now let us see a few examples now here again in the first picture i would like you to describe the image so you can see here you have this uh, bright yellowish to whitish color lesions okay and these lesions are actually obscuring the blood vessels you can see the blood vessels are not very clear so this tells you that what you are looking at is a retinitis lesion the inflammation is present in the retina now if you see if you have a look at the distribution of these retinitis lesions so this uh, distribution is more like a feather or we can say the distribution is along the blood vessel right so this is called perivascular distribution of retinitis similarly in the second picture as well you can see this creamy whitish or yellowish color lesions which are present along the blood vessels obscuring some parts of the uh, blood vessel so this is again perivascular distribution of retinitis lesion and along with that you can see certain hemorrhages as well so this is nothing but this is cmv retinitis and one classical term which is associated with cmv retinitis is pizza pie appearance okay so what is pizza pie appearance pizza pie appearance as we know that pizza has lots of cheese and ketchup so that ketchup can mimic this the, the hemorrhages mimic that ketchup and these retinitis lesion which are whitish in or yellowish in color they mimic that cheese on the pizza so it's called a pizza pie appearance in cmv retinitis now what about this picture now in this first picture if you notice we see some retinitis lesions here we see some whitish lesions here and can you comment uh, on the blood vessels along these whitish lesions no uh, in fact we can't even make out the disc very well in this first image the reason is the presence of dense vitritis in this image right however in the periphery you can see there are some whitish lesions which are present and they have some sort of scallop uh margins around them okay and you can see some hemorrhages as well in the periphery right so this is a peripheral retinitis which is present in the periphery of the retina along with dense vitritis similarly in the second picture you can see that here again we have these whitish color lesions present in the periphery with scalloped margins and you can see some uh, areas where the vessels also seem to be involved so there is some sort of vasculitis also going on here you can see some amount of hemorrhages right now again in this third picture you can see these multiple areas of uh, this peripheral retinal lesions and they're actually more whitish in color because these are not just retinitis but the inflammation is so severe that there's actually necrosis going on in the retina right so what we are seeing here is basically in the first picture we noticed that there was dense vitreous inflammation or dense vitritis then of course we can see the vascular involvement as well so inflammation of the vessels is called vasculitis so here we are seeing retinal vascular arteriolitis that means the arterioles are getting involved in the periphery and of course there is retinitis lesions which are present in the periphery so what we are dealing with here dealing here is with is the acute retinal necrosis okay so arn is nothing but it is acute retinal necrosis and basically it has this peripheral areas of retinal vasc uh, retinitis along with occlusive vasculitis and dense vitritis and the viruses which are involved in arn are varicella zoster virus and herpes simplex virus so it's very important for you to, to diagnose this condition what about this in this condition again you can see some areas of whitening or some areas of yellowish lesion but what you can observe is that here these areas which are present around the vessel seems to be actually spared or normal right so this is a vessel going on and around the vessel you do not see those retinitis lesions so this is perivascular clearing or sparing okay and this is seen in progressive outer retinal necrosis similarly in the second picture you can see this retinitis lesion is starting in the macular area and then it starts to spread across the retina and with some amount of perivascular 
clearing of this thing right so this perivascular clearing looks like as if we are looking at a cracked mud pot and this is called a cracked mud pot appearance so just uh, have a look at this so these cracks and these uh, perivascular spearing looks like cracked mud pot appearance and this is seen in progressive outer retinal necrosis okay so the main difference between ARN and PORN that is progressive outer retinal necrosis is that in acute retinal necrosis you had full thickness necrosis or retinitis going on but in progressive outer retinal necrosis the necrosis or the retinitis start in the outer layers and uh, the dense vitritis which was present in ARN is not present in progressive outer retinal necrosis. You can very clearly make out the disc and the blood vessels in the pawn or the progressive outer retinal necrosis. What about this lesion? Here again you can see some whitish fluffy lesion and they are looking very similar to that of the cotton wool spots. They're as if they're looking as if they are stuck on to the retina and the vessels are totally obscured. So definitely it tells you that you're seeing something very superficial on the retina. So these are actually nothing but it is candida retinitis or candida cotton ball colonies. Okay, and is usually a feature of candida endophthalmitis, which is seen in immuno uh, immuno uh, compromised individuals another entity or another type of retinitis is a post fever uh, retinitis or post pyrexia retinitis here the uh, patient usually gives a history of pyrexia because of some typhoid or rickettsia uh, rickettsial fever chikungunya dengue west nile uh, virus and zika virus and post viral uh, fevers post these viral fevers they basically develop visual symptoms and if you do a fundus examination you will actually find these retinal lesions like here uh, shown here around the blood vessels with some amount of hemorrhages and uh, what you see when once these lesions start healing is stellate maculopathy so you're going to see the distribution of hard exudates in a stellate fashion around the macula so this is your post fever retinitis another cause of retinitis after retinitis what we have is a choroiditis okay so the inflammation when it involves the choroid is called the choroiditis now the question is how does a choroidal inflammation look like okay a retinal inflammation was looking like a bright yellowish color lesion however a choroidal lesion which is present below the retina will be uh, it look more of a dull yellowish to orange color lesion and it's a deep seated lesion right so it'll ha it'll look slightly elevated sometimes the retinal vessels uh, will actually be seen to be crossing or to be passing over that lesion in contrast to retinitis where they were actually obscured by the retin retinitis lesion what about vitritis vitritis is usually rare with choroiditis because the choroid is a deeper structure when compared to retina retina is in direct contact with the uh, vitreous and therefore any kind of retinal inflammation will definitely involve the vitreous as well and cause vitritis however in some conditions when the choroidal inflammation involves the retina as well that is your chorioretinitis then in those conditions you might see vitritis as well so this picture over here gives you a contrast of how retinitis lesion looks like and how does a choroiditis lesion look like. A retinitis lesion as you can see is looking whitish to yellowish in color and the vessels here are basically obscured by that lesion. Whereas a choroiditis lesion is slightly uh, well defined and it is slightly deeper, seems to be elevated and it is orangish and dull yellow in color, mostly orangish and the vessel seems to be actually passing on top of that and with quite clarity. So this is the main difference between retinitis and choroiditis. Again, you can divide choroiditis into focal, multifocal, diffuse or geographical uh, choroiditis. Then these can be further divided into choroiditis with vitreous cells. That, uh, that means presence or absence of vitreitis or choroiditis without any vitreous. Choroiditis is a very vast topic and to explain all the differentials in one video is not an easy task and therefore we plan to discuss the white dot syndromes in the next video and then subsequently go about the differential diagnosis of different types of choroiditis. So that's all for today. Thank you and have a nice day.